Hi everybody, welcome back to the farmhouse. I'm Missy and I'm happy to have you here today. Today I am getting ready to get our garden started. I'm gonna plant some seeds for the garden. And so I thought I would share with you how we made our little um, DIY seed starting station. We first started growing our plants from seeds several years ago and um, when we started researching and looking at the pre-made seed starting stations you could buy, they were all really expensive and we didn't want to put that much investment into it since we didn't know if we would even like doing that. So we ended up making our own. We actually made um, one that's a lot bigger than this first and we still have it, but it's pretty bulky in the house and if we're not gonna start that many seeds, then we don't need that really big, huge one. So a few years ago, we made this smaller one just out of stuff we had laying around the house pretty much. Um, and so this is the one we use if we're not gonna start that much at one time to where we need the really big one. So you can really make your own seed starting station pretty inexpensively with things that you probably already have. So I'm just gonna kinda show you what we did and how it works. And um, like I said, we have used it before, so it does work well. And so the first thing we started with is this little shelf, which is not you know an expensive shelf at all. It's one, I guess it's considered a greenhouse shelf because it came with like a big plastic thing that fits over it and um, it unzips down the front. I, I'm pretty sure it is made for either starting seeds or just keeping your plants in during the winter when you know it's cold and keeping them warm. But um, the plastic thing is gone. It didn't last all that long, but we still have the little shelf. So we decided to just use this shelf and add our own lights to it and make our own um, seed starting station. So the first thing you're gonna need is a shelf or something that you can attach your light to, you know, and then a shelf to set your seeds on because you're gonna wanna be able to raise your light as your plants start growing. And then the second thing you're gonna need is your light. So what we have here is just a, um, a common, you know, shop light, two feet wide. That's how wide our little shelf is. And um, then we have chains. So there are, um, there are holes in the top of this light where you would mount it to the ceiling, but we just mounted it with little hooks to these chains from those, um, from those holes. And then the chains come up and we have little S hooks at the top where they um, hook onto the shelf above it. If you're using a wood shelf or something like that, you might have to use like a screw eye hook kind of thing so that you can um, hang your lights. So the reason you need to hang your lights is when you start your seeds, your lights need to be about two to three inches above your seeds. And then as your plants grow, you wanna be able to raise this light up and keep it about three inches above your plants. And so that's the whole purpose of having the, um, the chains and the hooks so that as your plants grow, you can just raise this light all the way up. I mean, ours aren't gonna get this big for sure before we plant them in the ground, but you will have plenty of room to raise your light so that your plants can get big and still have that light pretty close to them. And um, so about your bulbs. Now, when we built this one and did this first light, we were able to find the fluorescent bulbs um, in a grow bulb, which is supposed to be like the full spectrum of light. And so those work well for starting seeds and then also for growing your plants. So when we got ready this year, we kind of started getting our shelf you know, together to get our seeds planted. And we had another one of these light fixtures, so we wanted to add it and make another shelf with, so we would have two lights. We could not find the grow bulbs. So I did a little bit of research and what I found out is that if you are just gonna get regular fluorescent bulbs, you need to get a cool white bulb and a warm white bulb. 
and that gives you more of the whole spectrum. The cool um, white puts off the blue light and the red, the warm white puts off the red light and that's what you need. Your plants need the cool light to start coming up from seed. But then, and also the cool light helps them to be stronger and not get like leggy and weak. But then at that point, they need more of the warm light to help them grow and do what they need to do with the light and making food and all that sort of thing. So the next thing my husband did is he just, um, this light would have normally been um, wired into a building or whatever. So he just wired this cord into it so that we can just plug it into the wall to turn it off and on. Um, you could get fancy and have a timer or you could have a switch where you left it plugged in all the time and just turn the light off and on, but we just plug, and plug it in and unplug it. So you can go fancier than this. We're just pretty simple with what we, you know, the way we did ours. So with your lights, you need to have, um, you need to have lights on your plants from, from 12 to 16 hours a day. So like I said, you could use the timer to do that. So I just plug mine in when I get up in the morning and unplug them when I go to bed at night and it all pretty much balances out. Um, so while we were shopping for bulbs to add to our second shop light that we were gonna add to our shelf, we found, and there was only one in the store, but we found a grow light. And so we've never used one of those before, but we went ahead and got that this year and we're adding it onto our shelf. And I'm gonna see, this is what it looks like. This is um, an LED light too. So it's different than the fluorescent, but um, we're gonna give this a try. And it is supposed to be, like I said, that full spectrum of light. So I'm gonna kind of be doing a little bit of experiment this year and figure out, try to figure out which kind of light works better. Um, I believe that with this one, you're even supposed to be able to grow plants like all winter and still have um, them produce fruit, that it, you know, it has the right light for that or vegetables or whatever. Um, so, but we did the same thing with it. We just put it on chain and attached it to our shelf, just like we did the other light. And um, it has a cord, you know, came already wired in. So if you're not wanting to have to do like the electrical part and wire your light up and all of that, if you buy these grow lights that are already self-contained where they already have the cord to plug in, then you can avoid, you know, having to do the electrical part of it. So they would probably be the better choice for you if you could find it. But I guess the main idea is that you have some sort of shelf or something to use that you can set your seeds on and then you can attach your light to, um, have the chains, have the little S hooks where you can raise your light up real easily. It doesn't take hardly any effort at all as your plants grow so that you can keep the right amount of light on them and keep the light just above them as they grow and get bigger. And that's how you can have the most success, um, you know, planting seeds. So I'm going to go ahead and get my seeds planted here and get them on my shelf and get my lights turned on so that you can see how that all looks like when I get them on here.
here's what the shelf looks like with the plants on it. You can see this one better because of the light. <clears throat> but what I'll do, because the light is in the center of the two trays of plants, I'll rotate them every day or two and put the parts that are on the inside to the outside and put these outside parts over here to the inside so that they'll always have a balance of light. But this is what it looks like when plants are on it and it's all plugged in so there they are so I'll try to leave some links for you below um, the products that we used to build our little DIY um, seed station like I said it's not very expensive you can gather up things that you already have around the house and you can get started on this little project really quick and get you some seeds going. Be ready to plant them in your garden as soon as it's warm enough where you live to get them in the ground outside. So I hope that this will be, encourage you maybe to kind of start your own little seed starting station. If you've never started plants from seeds before, it's um, really easy. It's really pretty fun and it's real um, satisfying to just plant a seed in the ground and then see these little plants sprout up and watch them grow and then you know plant them in the yard or in pots or wherever you know you want to plant them and actually see them either you know produce flowers or produce vegetables or produce fruit whatever it's just I think it's pretty cool we got started um, planting seeds because we wanted to plant some heirloom varieties of things and we could never find those locally at any of the garden centers so by um, doing it this way it's usually really easy to find the heirloom seeds and so that way you can buy the seeds and you can start any variety of plants that you want so anyway I hope that um, you know this will encourage you to Give it a try. I hope the video was helpful to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I try to make a new video every week and I would love to have you join me.